This week we join our friends at California Resources Corporation on this Science Sunday to study earthquakes, something Kern County is all too familiar with. Now you can follow along at home by simulating seismic activity with a smartphone and then some various items you already have around the house. Check it out. Today's demonstration, we're going to be showing you how um, earthquakes sort of work out in um, the earth. Um, we have some examples of uh, household items that you could find in order to do this demonstration. So one of the things that you may need um, or could find, and they don't necessarily need to be these, but you could find things with different textures. Um, we have a plastic water jug filled with just your normal uh, water faucet. We have one of these metal pans that are going to reenact like a harder sort of surface, um, concrete or really tight, tight um, grounds. And then we have a sponge that we're going to use to simulate um, sand or a sandy surface or like the desert or something like that. Um, other things you can find at home is maybe some floor tiles, uh, your yoga mat, uh, whatever you can. Just try to contrast the hardness and the softness of each of the objects you're going to be using. And with me, I have this nice baseball. Um, it's gonna be acting as our earthquake um, initiator. And so um, we're gonna be measuring the different impact that this ball will make on each of the different surfaces that we have. In order to do that, um, you will have to download an application on your iPhone. I'm gonna be using the HAMM, H-A-M-M, uh, seismograph. Um, just download it, it's free. and. One of the options it has is whether you can view um, the magnitude at one, three, or four times its um, reading. And we're just going to be using the simple one and see how it um, differs as we move through the different objects. Um, the seismograph that will uh, show squiggly lines, and the squiggly lines will uh, dictate how much of an impact each of the surfaces has. And then one of the things that we'll also want to look at is the aftershock effect. You know, is it dissipate really fast or is it a slow dissipation as time progresses? And so we'll check that out as well. So I'm going to turn my iPhone on, um, download the seismograph, and here is what it normally looks like. And it's pretty simple. All you'll do is hit start once we're ready. So I'm going to put it on the surface itself. So I'm going to try to decide which way we'll want to do. And as I drop the ball, go ahead and observe the water. And we'll talk about it a little bit on how it reacted. Now, obviously, the higher, the higher you are to uh, the surface, you can put this on the ground. You don't have to do it on the table necessarily. I'm kind of tall, um, about six foot. Um, but um, the higher you are, the more force it's going to generate. So you can play around with that and see the differences as well from dropping the ball at different heights. So one of the things you want to do is make sure your phone is on and hit the start button. Get your ball, pick your height, and go ahead and drop it. Oh, and I lost it. So one of the things you'll see here is that um, we talked about the squiggly lines and you see the initial hit is really high and then it slowly dissipates and you can see um, right afterwards there's another um, kind of high reading there and that's what we call the aftershock. Um, and you always hear about aftershocks being spoken in earthquakes and always worried about it because it could be something that creates a little bit further damage. Now, if this earthquake happened in the ocean like we're simulating here, one of the things that we're most concerned with is tsunamis. And so initially you may get an initial wave, but because of the aftershock effect, there's always going to be some subsequent waves that come that you need to be concerned about. And depending on the distance that you are from the source of the earthquake and where you're at, um, there's going to be some time differences. And that's why we've developed, or government uh, officers have developed, these tsunami alarm systems to evacuate people. Okay, so I'm going to do it one more time just to see if there's any differences. Um, I'm going to do about the same height, um, and hopefully we'll see the same effect. I'm going to hit push the uh, app to get it going. Now, on this um, exercise, you can see we got the same height that we did in the initial one. Uh, we have the aftershock effect, and you'll continue to see that, and then it dissipates sort of slowly. To watch the rest of this episode and see how the platter and the sponge absorb that seismic activity, just head over to our website, turnit23.com slash science Sundays. There you will also find some great science fair project ideas from the USGS. We'll see you next week.